My name is Arturo O'Farrell, and I am the founder and artistic director of the Afro-Latin Jazz Alliance and the Afro-Latin Jazz Orchestra. And I want to welcome you again to La Plaza at the Digital Village for our incredible experience performing with uh, Maestro Lechiere Lieches and the incredible Orchestra Rumpiles at uh, in Philadelphia, Temple University, on Friday, July 31st, of two, uh, 2015. An incredible concert. Uh, I had the privilege of performing with uh, Maestro Lecheres and uh, the amazing Steve Bernstein and uh, performing on uh, Lecheres' compositions and Steve's compositions and one of my pieces. And it was really, truly one of the most memorable nights of my musical life. One of the best things I can tell you about this evening, though, is that afterwards, after witnessing this incredible concert, you're welcome to hang out for an after-talk uh, that takes place between myself, the Tiedes Lieche, the great saxophonist composer ranger Livio Almeida, our dear friend, wonderful Brazilian guitarist Richard Miller, and uh, it's a really interesting conversation. If you have any interest at all in Afro-Brazilian, Afro-Latin, Afro- uh, folkloric, uh, the music of, of the diaspora. This is a conversation not to miss. We hope you stick around. Thank you for being here. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Lecheres Leche and Orquestra Rumpiles.
Thank you. Boa noite. Isso. Todo mundo entendeu. É, being incredible. We are very happy to be here. É, very generous city. Oh. Who is? Who is? Uh, the first, first, first te, uh, music, the composition was uh, Das Arabias. I make for the Arabic influence in, in Bahia music. Uh, now, uh, as well, uh, it's called Alafia. Next tune, I, I want to say a uh, kind of summer from Bahia before play the next tune, okay? Different type of summer da Bahia. Vamos tocar primeiro Samba Duro, Samba Duro. All this is Samba, it is inside in the next composition, okay? Now I, I, I explain this. Okay? <laughs> Pedir pra parar. De ritmo com samba duro. Now you play uh, samba afro com Ileae. Samba afro. Now you play the gross fata, ua gross fata of samba. The, uh, the oldest samba rhythm. It's called Kabula or Kabila. Here's the guy. He's the man. Okay, now you play o samba nasceu na Bahia. Samba is born in Bahia.
Musician. Here, in the best line from Humbilés. Tuba, Fernando Rocha. Yeah. Baritone saxophone, Vinícius Freitas. Yeah. And bass, Tromon. Adailson Rodrigues de Maruim. Yeah. Tromon session. Hugo Sam, first come on. Van Nilsson Lemos. Juraci Metzstein Time. Now you play Adupe Vavá. Thank you. 
Soprano saxofone, Ron Scott. Ron Scott. Vamos dar Roninho. Tenor sax, um, um alto sax um flute, Léo Rocha. Alto sax um flute, Paulinho Andrade. Alto sax, flute, 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 piccolo, everything. André Becker. One thousand five hundred years, friend. Yes, about. <laughs> okay, just say the name. Arturo Opeo. Opeo. Arturo. 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 É isso. Composition is uh, I make it for one man uh, for my uh, teacher in life and music. His name is Anunciação. Uh, pioneer, pioneer, né? Pioneer. And the fusion between Afro-Brazilian music and the jazz. Antonio Ferreira Anunciação is drama. Okay. You play now Anunciação.
Next tune, and it's then a composition from Arturo Pio. You can speak about your music. Okay. Um, when I first, uh, I gotta tell you, this really quickly, because I know that we can all speak, but uh, the vibe backstage is so beautiful. And you can't play music like this unless you're filled with love and wonder. <laughs> I'll tell you now. And courage, because what Lecheres does is difficult. So he's a hero, and all of these musicians are heroes, because keeping 24 musicians, 25, 26, 28, 30, 35 musicians is impossible, man. It's impossible. And Lecheres is doing that. I know. I have an orchestra. And I'll tell you, it's impossible. And so really, these guys are heroes, and we got to thank deeply. We thank the creator for Lecheres and Orchestra Rompiles. And the last thing I have to say is I didn't. Re I thought this was a rave. <laughs> I thought this was a rave. I'm sorry. I wrote a piece of jittery <laughs> electronic dance music. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Now you play intruso.
Arturo, se o em Bahia, se o em Bahia. Friend, for I know in five five days, five days, five days, about five days, but it's like hundred years. I want you to invite up the stage to play with us. Shivin Benstein. Shivin. And composition does uh, arrive for your I mean, beautiful goat. The name is Oshossi. And composition is let's go Floresta Azul. Woo! Blue Forest. Thank you. 
Steven Bernstein. Now you play one tune. Thank you. Thank you. Now you play a, compos a composition from Steven. You can speak about your composition later.
since it's English, right, I just uh, maybe New York and Philly, it's pretty close to the English language here, right? So, because they got about 15 languages to speak on this stage. But I got to just tell you something about this incredible band. And not that you, you already know it, but I just have to tell you about my personal experience, why I'm here. I, a year ago, I was on the road. And uh, traveling musicians, it's not a bad life if you're working. I always tell people, it's OK not to have a job as long as you're working. Yeah. You dig? So I was working in Germany, I had a day off, and this bus pulls up to this kind of crazy free jazz hippie festival. And out comes all these dudes. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? And then one last guy walks out, about six, seven. It's a guy I grew up with in California. And uh, I looked at him, I said, Eric. He goes, yeah, man, I got this incredible band. And oh, they get the bus. and. Trumpet players, we have a spoken language that goes beyond the trumpet. And let's just say these guys had come from Amsterdam. So we had a fantastic conversation in our third language <laughs> that we share. And uh, we all got to know each other. It was a beautiful thing. And I got to talk to Lefieres. He's talking about, and this band comes on. And, and I've heard a lot of music in my life. And my mind was just blown, as I'm sure you've all been blown by this incredible music, right? <laughs> this is some incredible music. Thank you so much for sharing this music with us, all of you. This entire incredible orchestra, every one of you, thank you so much. So anyway, Latiris asked me to play a piece of music, and in my head, I imagined what this band would sound like if it was playing something I wrote. So now we get to hear what that is. Vision one.
Steve Bernstein, Andrew Pet, João Teoria, João Teoria. Ah. Oh. Eh. Another trumpet player. Guilherme Giga Scott. Joatã Nascimento. Rudinei Machado. Play the last, last music. This is a composition from a big name from Brazilian music, Dorival Caymmi. He was here in the United States for many years. He played Noite de Temporal. Thank you, Danke, obrigado, Messi. Até a próxima vez.
Philadelphia Jazz Project and WRTI. Very happy to present to you, first time in a U.S. tour, um, Orquestra Rumpiles. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. Uh, I want so. to thank to Brazil, Bahia government, to make it possible to come together with uh, Philadelphia Jazz Club. Bahia Tusa e governo da Bahia. Queria agradecer também. É, e o play team from Dorival Caymmi, Baixa do Sapateiro, ok? You, you go home. Thank you. See you next time. Everybody, everybody stay, everybody stay on samba. You need samba now, now, samba dance. Yeah, nobody sees. Everybody. Up, ok?
let me begin by telling you one of the most beautiful experiences of my life as a musician was meeting you, playing with your musicians, playing your music, and the privilege of of hearing you teach and hearing you speak and do we still play your music and that was it for me that was one of the high points of my musical life uma das do, das experiências mais altas da vida musical dele foi conhecê-lo tocar sua música e e a, a, eles ainda estão tocando a sua música e então para ele é uma das um, experiências mais altas da vida da carreira dele musical Eu, eu posso dizer o mesmo, para nós, foi uma experiência única ter a participação dele e a minha participação com a orquestra dele, para mim, foi uma experiência de aprendizado muito grande, de saber a possibilidade de qual a linguagem que eu usaria para poder fazer com que os músicos da orquestra dele entendessem essas minúcias da música que, eu, que é muito particular, que é da, dos ritmos daqui de Salvador. E eles tiveram um resultado muito positivo. So he he feels the same way, Arturo, and uh, it was a, a deep learning experience for him to come and play with your orchestra, and to discover how he can translate the details of Brazilian music um, to to uh, pe people who aren't familiar with the intricacies of the rhythms of Bahia, Brazil. A lot of people have very simple notions of what the music of Bahia and uh, what candomblé is and what Afro-Brazilian music is. Can you tell us in a few words uh, for our listeners? Uh, uh, well, you don't, have, you don't have to give us the secret, but help us understand uh, more about the beautiful, beautiful music of your people. Às vezes as pessoas têm uma ideia muito simplificada do que, que é, o que, que são os ritmos da Bahia, da, do Candomblé. E, então o maestro Arturo está perguntando se você pode dar a, a essência, talvez não tudo, mas a, a, para as pessoas entenderem o que, que é, a, quais são a, a, a música brasileira, a música da Bahia. Olha, eu prefiro falar sobre música popular brasileira. Eu vou te dizer os trechos pequenos, porque vai ser grande. Eu prefiro falar sobre a música popular brasileira e as matrizes africanas na música popular brasileira. Eu estou falando aí do A Bossa Nova, eu estou falando do Choro, eu estou falando do Frevo, eu falo do Maracatu. Essas músicas todas têm o mesmo, é, o mesmo fundamento de rigor de estrutura, de forma de organização, né, vamos dizer, de forma de organização e de transmissão. Então, o princípio para essa música popular brasileira, ela parte é, da música ancestral do, do qual a Bahia preservou bem. Essa é a primeira parte que eu vou falar. Então, so ele gostaria would like to speak about Brazilian popular music and the African roots and um, patterns found in that, in the music of choro, of frevo of Bossa Nova and um que que eu deixei por fora? Maracatu Maracatu um and so and so yeah so that's that's the area that he's he's going to speak and specifically Brazilian popular music and the African influences and patterns found in it Beautiful Also the organizational forms he said Yes Isso isso exactly Então o que eu quis dizer é que essa organização ela é ela é, ela faz parte do, do patrimônio da música popular brasileira como um todo a, a, a diferença é que a Bahia tivemos a sorte de, de, das matrizes que gerou a música brasileira por exemplo a matriz do piano de Tom Jobim eu acredito que vem de um toque conhecido do candomblé que foi oriundo do recôncavo da Bahia por exemplo faça essa esse link rápido, assim, eu estou exagerando. A matriz que o piano de Tom Jobim, ela, a gente faz o histórico dela e vai dar, no final do século XIX, a, a, um, a um tipo de música que saiu do Recôncavo da Bahia para o Rio de Janeiro, por exemplo. Sim, yeah, so ele está falando sobre as estruturas de toda a música brasileira e como elas estão presentes, especificamente a música da Bahia, 
and and the example he's giving is that the the piano the the way Jobim played the the piano can be traced um, to Bahia, to to certain structures that and because Bahia has preserved um, more than anywhere um, the African inheritance in music. No, no, yeah, tracing back to the late 1800s. 1800s, yeah. Isso, isso. final do século XIX. Teve uma, 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 uma leva grande de baianos que foi para o Rio, por causa que o Rio de Janeiro era o lugar das oportunidades para a família real. É importante colocar historicamente yeah. por que é que esses baianos foram para o Rio. Yeah. Eu não estou dizendo que só teve chegada de escravo na Bahia, não é isso. O primeiro lugar que chegou escravos é São Paulo, Rio de Janeiro chegou, mas eu estou falando especificamente do samba brasileiro. O samba brasileiro, nós hoje, pelos estudos, entendemos que vem de um grupo étnico nesse deslocamento do final do século XIX. So at the end of the 19th century there was a, a migration from Bahia to Rio um, because of the economic opportunities in Rio and that is one of the elements that um, created samba because bringing bringing that influence from Bahia to Rio is what uh, generated uh, specifically samba. One of one of the Okay, okay. O Rio no, no, no. já tocava o Rio já tocava outro tipo de samba, só para saber. Já tinha um samba que era mais ligado ao lundu, ao machixe, que gerou um tipo de samba até esse período. Mas depois com a chegada desse, desse grupo de baiano, esse samba se transforma no, no samba nacional que ficou mundialmente conhecido. Essa figura de samba que a gente fala. E, so, um exemplo um, do samba. Rio already had a, a certain type of samba that was a, a mixture of lundu, which is a colonial dance. Um, and do jango, do, do, do jongo, jongo também, do jongo. jongo the, uh, the jongo and the machixe. And, and th those were um, the, what consisted of samba in Rio. But when with this uh, migration from Bahia um, to Rio, the, what developed was the samba that became the internationally known samba. Right, so those were colonial dances, those were uh, Eurocentric dances, and the, then that migration introduced the more African uh, element into, that was where the, the, great, uh, the great experiment really began to take shape. So, he is asking if these dances, like Lundu, Machiste, were European. E, e que... Ah, sim. Ah, os ritmos, as danças eram, é, é, é uma mistura dos ritmos africanos com as danças europeias. Para criar a música brasileira, teve a influência da polca rabaneira, de, de, de ritmos europeus, das danças europeias, né? o Scott, hum. várias danças europeias, inclusive o choro, estruturalmente, se considera que é a mistura do Lundu com a polca. Yeah. So he's saying that um, these dances that he cited are a mixture of European dances and uh, and African rhythms. And so mm -hmm. specifically, Shoro comes from blending polka um, with um, with the lundu. And so that that created lundu is an African dance. Um, and so that isso created, é uma forma muito so, superficial, é mais complexo yeah. do que isso. It's é much muito mais complexo. Much more complex than that, but... but of course, forma, of course, of yeah. course. Essa forma simples de falar, o que é muito mais complexo, porque o choro teve mais influência rítmicas yeah. de outras nações também. A yeah. gente agora, analisando o choro de Pixinguinha, por exemplo, eu tenho um trabalho agora, um estudo com um colega, e a gente percebeu que tem influência de toques de outras entidades de candomblé, inclusive dentro do show. So, uh, yeah, so it's much more complex than just saying polka and right. lundu. Right. Um, and there are influences from other countries, so a analyzing a tune by Pichinguinha, they realize there, there's some candomblé involved in it, too. So it's, it's a much more complex process. Can I, I've been dying to ask uh, Maestro a question for many years because, um, and I know that he's traveled all over uh, South America and the Caribbean, and there's so many, there's hundreds of variations, for instance, in the bomba rhythm in just Puerto Rico, hundreds, just in Puerto Rico, hundreds of variations. And I wonder if he would speak to the source of so much 
are, are the sources of all the rhythms of Central South America and the Caribbean directly traceable to their African birthplace? And how, how do you even begin to catalog or assess how many of those sources of nutrition there are? Ah, então, a pergunta dele é uh, um, um exemplo da, da música de Porto Rico, que se chama Bomba, uh, que tem centenas de variações. Então, a, eu, uma pergunta que ele há, há muito tempo quer perguntar a você, Letieres, é uh, se é possível uh, traçar, é traçar, Lívia? Uh, o, é, as rastrear. Origens, é, rastrear. rastrear as origens das, das, dos ritmos e da música africana na, uh, no Novo Mundo. Essa é, é o que eu tenho feito, que eu tenho tentado, buscar fazer nesses últimos 30 anos, porque existem os radicais, que são os DNAs, as menores porções ritmos, que eles chamam de timeline. Aí, o timeline. Então, a partir dessa observação, você consegue, e ele se desloca, ele não está na mesma posição sempre, ele às vezes se desloca para outros lugares. É uma observação um pouco complexa, mas de tantos anos observando, você consegue entender exatamente que aqui está me pertence a tal etnia, a tal grupo, e aqui nós temos uma vantagem na Bahia, porque as grandes universidades da Bahia são os terreiros de candomblé, que com toda a perseguição que existe até hoje, toda a perseguição que eu falo de intolerância religiosa, que existe até hoje, eles se mantiveram mantiveram uma cultura muito intacta. Então, aí são os lugares de, de grande observação. Você consegue ter as nações de Candomblé e Salvador, as três maiores, talvez, que se reuniram no país, né, que se formaram, Queto, Jeje e de Angola. Você tem representações e você consegue é, pegar de, uma, de, uma, de um fonograma contemporâneo uma, um toque, desconstruir ele até a menor poção, primeiro primeiro Primeiro, primeiro exercício é esse, e procurar um relativo. É, na realidade, eu não pesquiso direto do candomblé, só para deixar claro. Eu pesquiso fonogramas. A minha, a minha observação é feita a partir de gravações que eu tenho de antigas e de várias épocas. So he's saying this this question that you asked has been the center of his research for the last 30 years. And it, it uh, comes from him researching what's the DNA, what's the smallest unit, musical unit, um, and and he has an advantage in Bahia because in Bahia the the Candomblé, the African religions, have uh, remained intact despite the religious persecution that it suffers even today, and so his, his, and his research um, is mainly through recordings. Um, so, so he doesn't go and study uh, the candomblé directly, but he studies through recordings, finding the smallest units, and he's found that um, it may vary, it may um, change uh, a bit. Uh, uh, people call in the, uh, people call in the United States a uh, timeline. The like timeline. timeline. So, yeah, timeline um, is a, a ter term for. But, uh, uh, you call in Brazil, no. but he say clave, clave in Cuba, clave. like clave. In, in Cuba, it's clave, a timeline or uh, bell pattern. The closest. Ah, eu, eu observo a clave das músicas brasileiras para ele entender melhor a clave de diversas músicas brasileiras. Yeah, so he studies the the clave, the timeline in Brazilian music. The closest thing that I have ever experienced to that, of course, is the music of Yoruban worship in Cuba, and sometimes, uh, and and of course, different. Uh, uh, different slaves brought different you know different people came from different parts of africa to the new world but specifically some of the st some of the rhythms that i've heard that end up being clave and afro-cuban come from ghana can you speak a little bit about some of the sources yes. that é, então um exemplo disso que ele estudou é são os ritmos de yoruba da cuba e então ele ele uh, ele ele uh, descobriu que muitos desses ritmos vêm do país Gana e então ele queria que vocês uh, falassem um pouco sobre isso da origem é, desse, a, a, desse a, a música tá 
a grande parte da música brasileira, ela não vem desses países, segundo o estudo, eu estou falando tudo de forma muito aproximada, não é uma coisa carimbada, tá? isso está em construção, mas a minha observação pessoal é que grande parte da música brasileira, da cultura brasileira, ela não vem desses países subsaarianos, que a gente vai colocar como Nigéria, Gana, hoje o Benin, o Senegal, esses países subsaarianos. Eu não acredito que a grande parte da música brasileira venha daí. Primeiro fale isso aí para so, continuar. Um, so he he does not believe that the the greater part of Brazilian music comes from sub-Saharan Africa. Ah, a, wow. Uh, yeah, so Ghana and Benin and Nigeria and Senegal. Um, so eu acredito que a grande parte que fundou a música brasileira vem da África Meridional, que seria do, do que a gente chama cultura banto que é Banto. que é o não é uma, uma etnia o Banto é um grupo étnico linguístico Banto mas a gente é, os países que chegaram em massa desde 1600 no país os escravos que foram trazidos a, a, seres humanos escravizados né? eu gosto de falar assim os seres humanos escravizados que foram trazidos para para esse período de 1600 para cá a maioria vieram dessa região então é Angola Congo Moçambique Zâmbia, esses países Daí eu acredito que grande parte da nossa cultura vem da colaboração cultural desses povos. So Brazil in, inherited the 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 band to uh, de 1600, 1600. Uh, um, from 1600 um, on um, and he he made a, a, a distinction. He doesn't call the slaves. He calls the human being the enslaved. Right, the being. enslaved human beings. That's correct. And, That's correct. Um, and so um and so the the great part of african influence in brazil comes from the bantu uh, ethnic group it's it's a linguistic uh, distinction the bantu and mm -hmm. it um and so countries like angola mozambique um and quais são os outros países congo 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 yeah and um Zambia. são os três maiores Yeah. The, right. the, the three largest. Ah, Zambia. Agora eu posso falar algumas Zambia. algumas manifestações brasileiras que vêm desse grupo? Claro. He wants to know if he can talk about some of the um, uh, Brazilian manifestations that come from these groups. I would love it if he would. A Sim. primeira, o samba. O samba. The first samba. one is samba. Yeah. Okay. Capoeira. 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 Which is. Maracatu. 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 Samba de Ró, tudo, todas essas manifestações que, é, que são descendentes, que são subgêneros do samba, vamos dizer assim, são, de, são, são dessa região, são várias. So, so uhum. all these rhythms come from that region of Africa. Can, can, is there... Então, uh, go ahead. No, Literis, please. Master. Não, eu ia falar que, a, que a, grande, a grande estrutura da música brasileira vem daí. Agora, Existe sim na música brasileira é influência subsaariana também dos candomblés de, de, de Orubá. Aqui no Brasil, Orubá, a gente vai chamar o candomblé de Queto, Nagô, Queto Nagô. Então nós temos também essa influência na música brasileira, mas é muito menor. So Brazil, assim como that, temos tam... Brazil does have the sub-Saharan influence from Senegal and those countries. Um, in... Um, no, Nigeria, 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 and Nigeria, um, and so, but it's a much smaller than the influence from the Bantu tribes. And um, assim como também do povo do Benin que antes era o reino de Dalmé que virou o Benin também influencia de alguma forma de sutil. And so, ah, eu estou falando a música popular, falando a música da rua. Yeah, so he's talking about Brazilian popular music. Um, and so even a country like Benin that was um, before called the 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 kingdom of Dalmé, né? Mas a grande a é, reino de Dalmé. A grande música de rua do Brasil, o samba reggae, as as as, as, as agremiações de rua, escola de samba, são de influência mais dessa cultura que chama uma cultura banto. Yeah, so the great the greater part of the influences comes from the bantu um, Aí chega a orquestra Rompilés. Agora chega a orquestra Rompilés. And that's where the orchestra Rompilés um, 
uh, comes from. And and I have I have always wanted to ask uh, also, is there a blending between the music of the enslaved, the indigenous? Does that ever happen? Is there like uh, indigenous peoples of, of Brazil? Does is there an influence that that has happened? No, a música brasileira teve muito pouca influência indígena. Uh -huh. Muito pouca, por causa da, 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 da... Primeiro, na condição social, que os índios não se deixavam escravizar, não se deixavam escravizar os índios, e, e eles tiveram que buscar escravos na África. Então, o, o, o negro estava mais próximo dos centros urbanos, aonde houve as primeiras configurações estruturais da música brasileira. So, Brazil has had very little uh, indigenous influence um, in its music, uh, mainly because the natives of Brazil did not allow themselves to be enslaved, and they avoided the, the urban centers. And so that's one of the reasons that the African humans were enslaved and brought to Brazil. And they were much closer to the urban centers, and had, and so the African rhythm is very prominent. The indigenous, um, the indigenous influence in Brazilian music is um, almost non-existent. Mas temos influência, sim. Temos but influência. Do, but we do have. Um, Mas não é na potência que foi a música negra. Mas isso eu estou falando das América inteira, do, da Argentina, do tango, ao jazz norte-americano, ao blues. Até o tango da Argentina. So, and this, this, this is true oh, all over the Americas that the African um, rhythm had a much more of an impact than indigenous um, music. Right, and and that Do indigenous tango. indigenous music is very very different and very very strong, but they they yeah, it was yeah. never a blending. I wanted to. Uh, you you know say that this is a very special day not only because I get to spend time with the maestro. But also one of my favorite uh, human beings and one of my favorite musicians on the planet is uh, sitting here with us. Uh, great composer, uh, great arranger, incredible saxophonist, flautist, um, Livio Almeida. And so I wonder if, Livio, you want to get in here and ask the Maestro any questions or you want to uh, talk about the experience you had? Uh, when we played together with Maestro Lietes, and anything that you want to, 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 to interject would be welcome. We, By the way, I just want to say I love you, man, uh, and we miss you so much, and, and, and I'm so happy to see you today. Uh, Arturo, thank you so much for your kind words, man. I, I miss you so much, too. I really uh, wish to uh, see you again and play with you sooner than later when this whole thing, you know, uh, gets better. Well, I have an invitation from Maestro to go visit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so we, Beautiful. Gonna, we got to organize then like you go to the whole country. We got to organize. organize. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well, first, you know that the experience of the, the Cuban and, and Brazil, uh, you know, the music from the Americas concert that we did a few years ago, I think was amazing, was beautiful. The blending of you know seeing what's Arturo, what you represent as a composer in you know for for the music you do in, in for the whole America and together with uh, Lechieres representing Brazil, I couldn't see a better combination first because you guys really it's like you're a twin spirits almost. <laughs> 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 and I think that's why I I feel so good uh, and I, I make both of you great friends is because of that uh, uh, you know we, we have a good match as per se but uh, this discussion of the importance of African culture in music of the whole Americas of the new world is so important and so necessary especially nowadays with everything that you see happening you know uh both of you guys are so important and i really admire and I'm, i just uh, i feel that it's a privilege for me to participate and be close to both of you thank you livio um and i remember those concerts and i remember the concerts at uh in philadelphia with steve bernstein and i remember the music of the americas and i wonder if any 
any anything sticks out any crazy stories any i remember can i tell you master lietianis what what i remember i remember being backstage with you and gathering at a prayer circle yeah. and and yeah, and yeah, I remember. and i i don't i think you were praying the our father i'm not sure but I felt like the, so spiritually connected to you guys that all of a sudden I understood Portuguese. Deu para entender, And then, and then having Livio with us in New York at the Symphony Space concert and playing your music, Livio. As I recall, we played some of your music. What it, what, yeah. have that, man. Yeah. 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 Have you have you uh have you and Lichard has been friends for a while or do you do, you, do you have you well, well since that time we, we speak, of course we are he's in Salvador, I'm in right. Brasilia. Right. But we, we keep in touch, you know. Uh and uh, I've been following his research a little more closely now because uh since I, I I've been in Brazil. Uh, but yeah, he, he's gonna be actually. I'm organizing a little saxophone thing here in Brazil that is gonna be a part tomorrow. Like, uh, I can uh, uh, extend the invitation. To I'm you. there, I'm there, I go there. That's it, that's I'm invited. You know, it's funny because that that was also to me what was also profound about meeting Maestro Lietieres was seeing him teach, and it, it affirms what I believe that when you're a musician whatever you do you're a teacher and so if you're going to be giving lessons you should know what you're talking about but i remember the beautiful lecture you gave uh and the beautiful lecture you gave about the specific places that this music comes from and you're so knowledgeable and you're, you're such a scholar and i wonder if you could talk about is there a separation between the musician and the scholar the the, the teacher or is that part of the magic part of the a pergunta é se existe uma separação entre o dentro de você o músico o educador e o, o pesquisador eu 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 vejo música uma coisa só mas tem uma coisa, quando eu estou pensando na pesquisa, eu acho que eu, eu, eu acesso processos e que na, quando eu estou criando, quando eu estou tocando, é, é mais confortável, vamos dizer assim. Não é que é mais tenso, mas é assim, eu tenho poucas respostas. Por exemplo, é, eu não consigo, é, não é fácil entender é, ou ensinar ou pensar a música brasileira, que é baseada na matriz africana, usando ferramenta de música europeia, por exemplo. So, uh, the for him it's it's all it's it's all facets of the same and and when he studies um, when he's a, a, a researcher studying um, sometimes to translate that the the African patterns um, it it there's some difficulty in in educating that. Me ajuda, Liv. Uhum. Usando as ferramentas oh. da, da cultura oh, yeah. europeia, os toys, os toys, toys. Quer dizer, yeah. eu estou usando a lente de uma cultura para explicar uh -huh. outra. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, the difficulty arises when when he's um, translating the African patterns using European instruments, and and so it's like looking at one culture with with uh, European glasses, um, looking at the African patterns, and so. We're... We're go we're going. Por que isso, professor? Porque aonde eu leciono, onde eu dou aula, essas escolas mais antigas, elas já são todas formatadas em um pensamento de musical, somente na questão de ritmo, num pensamento europeu, eurocêntrico. So um, and the difficulty is that where he teaches. Um, the structure is Eurocentric, and so yeah. What I was going to say is, we're going through a crisis. I'm I'm a professor at UCLA, and we're going through a big crisis right now because of the uh, 
uh, uh, political and racial uh, truths that are being discovered about America, we're discovering that uh, the Eurocentric canon has, uh, uh, is, is inaccurate. That in order to be a real equipped, in order to be really equipped as a human being and as an artist, you have to understand uh, Bach and uh, Brazil. You have to understand. Uh, 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 you have to understand Gamelon music and John Coltrane, and so we look. We're looking at a crisis in theory, in our in our in our world because we we feel, I feel and I say that we're not teaching students theory unless we teach them as much of the the the, the, the you know the global way of organizing rhythms and sounds. There's so many ways to organize music throughout the planet, and they're all valid, they're all valuable. And so we're going through a, a big crisis, trying to get away from Eurocentric, you know, don't no parallel fits, the uh, serial tone road, all that stuff. It's, it's very important, but much more important to have a balance of global organization for music and I wonder if, if they're going through anything like that. Mas é isso que eu quero dizer. Eu tô falando isso. So he's eu, he's, eu acho, he's saying the same não, thing. Yeah. É, eu não tô não, não acho que deva abrir mão da cultura europeia. Não é isso que eu falei. O que eu acho é que não tem um equilíbrio. Por exemplo, eu acho que não é possível a escrita musical. Vê se ele concorda comigo. Vou perguntar para ele. Ele concorda que a escrita musical não é suficiente para poder representar os micro ritmos pergunte ele isso. So he's saying that uh, that he's going through a, a similar um, experience and it's not that he wants to do away with European music. Not at all. There's an unbalance. Um, and so and his question um, to you is that in in writing in the musical notation um, often the intricacies and nuances of the rhythms are lost, and he micro ritmos, micro ritmos. The micro rhythms um, are often lost in the musical I, location. I have, I have a theory. The theory is that you can write out uh, Afro-based rhythms, and you can read them, but it's not the same thing as respecting them, and it's not the same thing as growing up, listening and yes, loving yes, music yes, from that yes. part of the world. So, it, so because we do it all the time, we have to write music for people who don't know this music to play. But nothing, it, one one eighth note in the somebody's in somebody else's hands yes, can yes. sound different yes. than in a European musician's hands. It's it's então, it's. It... A minha sugestão é usar as duas culturas em equilíbrio, como fez o jazz. O jazz escreve jazz jazz escreve da forma europeia, mas toca em swing, timba com um baguinho, mas escreve ta 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 ta, ta entende? O yeah. jazz. Eu vou fazer o mesmo com a música a brasileira, afro-cubana. É ensinar os músicos a, a, a interpretar em clave, mas não, não precisa forçar a escrita com muito sinal. Então, eu acho que tem que usar oralidade, oralidade, hmm. em comum acordo com a tradição da yeah. música europeia. Usar so he, duas culturas em equilíbrio. Pronto. So he's saying that uh, jazz does this. It 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 ex, uh, it expresses um, both cultures on a, a more even level. Um, but what's the inf what's uh, important is to have the written um, experience of playing music uh, equal to the oral tradition, because uh, it's it's uh, burdens the written music to try to add all the details, all the nuances. And so better to teach um, orally, you know, with the oral tradition, the feel for a swing um, eighth note as, as opposed to what it looks like on paper, as opposed to trying to notate what the swing is. Isso já, isso já ser matéria dentro da escola. Os professores serem preparados a usar as duas culturas da oralidade em comum acordo com a escrita tradicional. Porque a escrita é só uma ferramenta, ela não é o fim. A escrita, a anotação, ela é uma ferramenta, ela não é o fim. Então, hum. precisamos preparar o músico no corpo dele, no corpo. Oh. E é isso que eu faço com o método que eu tenho aqui no livro que eu faço, da minha escola. Eu preparo o primeiro sem instrumento. 
eu treino o músico ritmicamente. Que é a matéria mais difícil. Olha bem, se eu quiser coisa de harmonia, tem 400 livros de harmonia. Mm. Mas quando vai tratar de ritmo, tem que ser no corpo, não tem jeito. So he's saying that um, what's important is to train the teachers and train them equally in the notation and the oral tradition because notation is not the end product. It's a tool. And so what he does is he trains musicians in their bodies first uh, without notation. And, and that's his contribution is, uh, is a rhythmic training in the body, in the oral tradition um, that precedes the notation. And, can, yeah. they, can they jump here for a second? Yeah, please, always jump in, leave you, yeah. Uh, I would like to propose, I think it would be fascinating to hear Arturo and uh, Lecieris talk about this, because I heard Lecieris talk uh, a couple of times about a thought he has that I found fascinating, that a lot of people talk about syncopation in this kind of music, uh, in Brazilian music or Latin music, no, or any other music from uh, uh, African uh, diaspora. But he discusses that actually this is not exactly syncopation. If you think inside of the 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 matrix rhythm, actually, it's all downbeats. Uh, right. Chama acento, acentos, yeah. acentos naturais, ou acentos culturais. Acentos Acent, culturais. Yeah. Cultural accent. So, would be great, uh, Letieri, eu estou falando, é que eu ouvi você falar já umas duas vezes recentemente sobre é, essa questão. Não, tem, não existe sim. Fala para ele, não tem síncope na música brasileira. Eu não, eu não vejo síncope. Esses lugares de, que são acentos naturais da nossa cultura. É só é síncope se eu comparar com a cultura europeia. Se o, se o, se o meu parâmetro for o europeu. Pode falar isso, Lívia. So, um, uh, eu, eu, vou, eu vou só colocar tá a, a definição do, do que é síncope. Né? So, uh, he's saying the syncopated rhythms is, are deviations from the normal. And um, so he's saying that in Brazilian music there aren't, are not syncopations because it's within the cultural accent of the music and so it's it's not a departure from the, from the natural action so it's not syncopated i i have a theory that i've been working with for many many years and that is that it has to do with the way it has to do with with the way we hear the way we're yeah. trained and in european in eurocentric training we're taught to find the center of the pulse to find yeah. that beat and in and and in my tradition in afro-cuban tradition we don't find a pulse or a beat we find a phrase a much larger entity and so if you hear rhythmic activity in a larger setting then it is all downbeats because you're hearing everything you're not assigning a pulse you're not terrorizing the groove by containing it to a steady even pulse and yes, that's you know that's that's what I, and, and so I think people who come from this music hear a very large beat <laughs> and so they don't hear <laughs> it. syncopation is the most natural thing in the world because it is the music it is the where with it is in this very large entity and that's why you know that's that that is what you can't write down you can't write down the infinite it's like trying to capture the infinite it's like trying to imprison life and beauty and yeah. love. You yeah. can't do it. You can't do it. Arturo, it's so it's so interesting you talk to you talk right like that to me. I uh, recently interviewed Joe Lovano, mm -hmm. and he said something basically the same. I said I asked him, "I your playing is so much has so much freedom and expression, yet it's so in the groove." And he said, "I think on the big beat." I think like, yeah. you know, two measures, four measures. Well, Joe Lovano, in his his relationship with time is huge. He'll take a phrase and he'll bend it and shape it, and it'll be this big, massive thing that 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 all the. Uh, um, I, I want to ask one more thing, and I know that Luciano's was so grateful for your time. I, I mean, I, I, I could sit here for hours just listening to you teach us. But before we do that, I want to also thank Richard Miller, who is an unbelievable guitarist. Uh, he's a special friend to the Afro-Latin Jazz Lines, and uh, uh, he was our director of education, and he has uh, been a part of music on the inside and helping people. And uh, as long as I've known Richard, he's someone 
whose heart is 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 very big and he's interested in being a part of help and community and and love so thank you richard for this this is extraordinary for you're me. welcome it's an honor for me so the, the the i i i i was taught that one of the reasons brazilian music and cuban music are so beautiful and big and fat and wondrous is because the colonial uh, forces did not control the enslaved uh, people's uh, 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 worship and their celebration. They didn't, they didn't take away their drums. They didn't take away uh, uh, their, their, their rites and their, their, their rituals. I wonder if you could comment to that. Entendeu, Letiaris? Não, não, não preste atenção. Então, o, ele quer que você comente sobre a música cubana e a música brasileira, por elas serem tão um, importantes e tão grandes e, e tão, com tanta influência. E ele acha por, que é porque os colonizadores não conteram, não, não controlaram tanto, não reprimiram tanto a... A, a cultura africana não tiraram em, os tambores em, em, em parte isso é verdade historicamente pelo que a gente estuda a repressão nos Estados Unidos foi muito a inglesa da colonização inglesa foi muito mais rigorosa o único lugar onde foram mais flexíveis é na parte francesa é, New Orleans lá Mississippi onde o tambor criolo conseguiu se manter até formar o drum set a gente sabe que tinham mais tambores, mas que foi muito... A repressão foi mais massiva. Tá, peraí. Em parte... Peraí, peraí, deixa eu traduzir essa parte. So, he's saying that um, th this is partly true. Historically, um, the English um, colonization was much more rigid and repressive. Um, and so, in the United States, the only um, areas were of... Uh, areas of French control, um, like Louisiana, where... The, the drum set was developed, um, and um, but um, in general the English re repression was much more severe than uh, the rest. Agora, of isso não é verdade que não teve a repressão no tambor no Brasil. No Brasil tinham leis, leis que não permitiu que se tocasse o tambor na rua nem o funcionamento de candomblé. So um, it's it's um, true also that there has been um, repression in Brazil. Um, and there are actual laws prohibiting playing drums on the street or even in candomblé. A, a, lei, a, a, lei, a lei que tira a perseguição a candomblé, ela só foi extinguida em 1976. É recente. <laughs> the, the, the law that... Um, that prohibited playing um, drums on the candomblé, street. Candomblé, oh, oh, candomblé, uh, não, candomblé, uh, a perseguição, the, perseguição, the persecution of, of... Aonde a percussão está lá dentro, né, claro. Uh, so the persecution of, of playing drums in candomblé was only removed as a law in Brazil in 1976. And that's interesting, because that's when they made it a law. Então, <laughs> here. Então, houve, há uma história muito engraçada no Rio de Janeiro, uma história muito engraçada de um pandeirista chamado Em Todos os Prazeres, que no pandeiro dele, dentro do pandeiro, ele tinha um salvo conduto de um deputado, de um político, que dizia que ele era uma pessoa de bem e ele podia andar com o pandeiro. Tinha uma so história que é engraçada. One of the early um, pandeiro players um, in Brazil, uh, written on the backside of his pandeiro was uh, a letter from one of the um, government officials uh, saying that he could carry his um, pandeiro <laughs> because he was a respectful person. So, final do século XIX, virada do século XX. That, that was the, the end of the uh, 19th century and into the 20th century. Então, eu vou te contar. Eu acho que o motivo é outro. Para mim, o motivo mais forte dessas duas culturas terem uma música é um pouco mais dominante, eu vejo um outro motivo. I, I o motivo, up, motivo but... que eu vejo é, é, é os grupos étnicos que formaram esses dois países, são muito semelhantes. Se você estudar yeah. um pouco mais, 
você vai ver que os grupos que vieram subsariano, eles vão para... No Brasil, inclusive, eles só vêm para a Bahia. Tem, tem alguns grupos que só vieram para a Bahia. De Orubá, de Benin, do Pão, dessa cultura. E foram para Cuba. Então, por isso que Cuba tem o Daumentanos, tem a cultura Daumé, o Abacuá, o Abacuá cubano, fora a Santeria, são semelhantes, tem semelhança no Brasil com algumas, com algumas correntes étnicas. Então, eu acho que tem a ver com o, 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 o que foi a última leva de escravos. Seria o final da, 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 da vamos dizer, a última, segunda metade do século XIX, foi quando foram as últimas levas. E esses, a leva que foi para Cuba é semelhante à leva que veio para a Bahia. So he's saying part of... é, etnica, etnicamente falando, uh -huh. de grupos étnicos. So he's speaking um, ethnically the, 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 the enslaved humans who went um, to Cuba uh, had a shared ethnicity with the ones that went to Bahia uh, in Brazil. And of course. Uh, it was especially um, in the last uh, waves of um, slave trade in the, slave, uh, in the 19th century, um, the ethnic groups that went to, to Cuba also went to Brazil. So the part of the similarity in, in the two cultures comes e from Abacuá. Abacuá. E esses grupos vinham de países subsaarianos da região que eu falo de Gana, de, de Nigéria e do, ben, e do atual Benin. Yeah, so and these groups came from the sub-Saharan Africa, Nigeria and the uh, Ghana and Benin. I grew up in uh, New York City. I came from Mexico, but I grew up in, in most of my life. I remember drum circles uh, in every park, in every corner of every street. And in uh, the 1980s, we had a, a, a very oppressive, tyrannical mayor that started yes. uh, outlawing drum circles and arresting drummers and taking away their drums. And I just want to say that uh, at this moment in history, it seems like we're repeating a, a terrible, terrible time in human history. But I'm a person of great faith and great hope and great optimism. And Master Lecheris, Richard, Livio, we will live to see the two orchestras and to compose and to laugh and eat together and have fun and, and hug one another and enjoy the life that was meant for us to be a part of. And this is uh, indeed a great and, and tr tremendous honor, Lecheris, tremendous honor. We will see that day, we will, we will join together and make a lot of music, man. We will add our healing hope, to the world. I hope, I hope, I hope. I'm hoping too, me too. I hope, I hope. <laughs> me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Master. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Lidio. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Be Thank well, you. sir. Thank you, guys. Right.